there are various forms of geoengineering. Some geoengineering could be related to ionospheric heating, weather modification, specifically stratospheric aerosol geoengineering is the idea of putting a protective layer over the Earth, reflecting sunlight back into space. Well, all I did was look up. Those aren't clouds, but what are they? And sometimes it's a tic-tac-toe board. It's not a cloud, it's not real. I was in Denver, Colorado, and I saw the, all these trails and the sky. And this is the first time I was aware of such precise trails. I recently had a visitor come from London, and he said, what's that crap? in your sky above the clouds. And I asked my friend who lives there, what are those? And she told me planes. I told her, planes do not leave such trails. I mean, they were so evident in that sky, and it was crisp. People think of chemtrails as being contrails, simply water vapor coming out the back of a jet. But that's just not true. Chemtrails do not dissipate. They stay in our sky. A lot of X's in the sky, a lot of parallels, all kinds of cross-hatching. We've had a reduction in sunshine hours. We've had a massive increase in cloud cover. We've seen our skies are no longer really blue. They're like a particulate blue-gray. And ultimately, what we end up with is extremes of weather. It's like uh, always using the future tense in uh, the press about uh, geoengineering. Well, we're thinking of having geoengineering. Perhaps we're going to have to use geoengineering because of the global warming, because of this, because of that. It has already begun. There are various types of programs that go beyond the aerosol trails or what people call the chemtrails. They're ship-based, we believe, disbursement of these aerosols and they're responsible for huge weather systems being created out in the Pacific. Something is going on, something so serious that the United States government will never, unless it is forced to acknowledge that it is doing it. Different particles have different effects, but the ones that people have talked about if you inject them into clouds in, in, over the ocean, they would make the clouds brighter and also reflect more sunlight. Even if you put 10 megatons a year of sulfur in, which is a huge number, by this model you only get about a watt, 0.7, of radiative forcing. Nevertheless, there might be some good reasons to think about alumina. It turns out, first of all, there's been a lot of work on the environmental consequences of alumina in the stratosphere. Alumina has four times the volumetric radiative forcing of, for small particles, as does sulfur. And that means you have four times less surface area for the same radio forcing. And this is a much bigger deal. You'd have roughly 16 times less the coagulation rate. And that's the thing that really drives removal. But nevertheless, the underlying concern, and the reason that this hasn't been talked about until the last few years, is this so-called moral hazard. <laughs>